The European Union Aviation Safety Agency have stated, contaminated air is not a flight safety issue. The air quality on a passenger jet aircraft is similar or better than what is observed in normal indoor environments. And the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration have stated, studies have shown cabin air is as good as or better than the air found in offices and homes. In rare instances, certain mechanical issues can cause fumes to enter the cabin. From the early days of global air travel, aviation has always strived to improve flight safety and make air travel as safe as possible. Through new technology and the analysis of incidents and accidents, the aviation industry has often found new solutions to address shortfallings and to reduce the risk for crews and the traveling public. Technologies such as weather radar and automatic landing, ground proximity warning systems, anti-collision avoidance system, airborne wind shear detection and alert systems since 9-11, new reinforced and locked cockpit doors, and since the disappearance of Malaysian flight MH370, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast ADSB has been introduced to help locate aircraft in real time. These are but a few of the numerous steps taken over decades by the aerospace industry to improve flight safety. However, aviation still has an Achilles heel, a problem that has existed since the dawn of the jet age, an inconvenient design philosophy. The problem relates to the way the breathing air is provided to most aircraft, a system known as bleed air as it bleeds from the compression section of the engine. The bleed air will be contaminated in varying degree with heated engine oils as a function of the system design. And as this air is not filtered, this poses a potential health and flight safety risk to crews and passengers. Initial flight safety reports linked to contaminated air go back as far as the early 1950s in military aircraft. I experienced blurred vision, became nauseated and experienced considerable dizziness. I recall no strange or unpleasant odors, nor did I taste anything out of the ordinary. The military soon instructed all pilots to use oxygen masks to mitigate the problem. On civilian aircraft, the scale of the problem was masked for decades by cigarette smoke until the smoking ban on aircraft was introduced in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Since then, the number of reported contaminated air events has rapidly increased globally, as have the reported flight safety issues. I took the headset off my head, grabbed for the quick donning oxygen mask, and put it on. I hardly remember how I did that. Now that was the last thing I could do physically for quite a while, because I was more or less paralyzed. I could not move. I could not lift my hand. The head of the Australian aviation regulator CASA two decades ago acknowledged the problem. There is no doubt that all aircraft from time to time suffer uh, fumes within the aircraft. Um, I think we've, we've, we've accurately reflected that that's a, um, a, a feature of the basic design of air conditioning systems in aircraft being um, bleed air from engines and that on occasions engines leak. I become aware of documents that suggest money did indeed change hands in return for silence on aircraft defects producing toxic fumes. The first document is entitled Agreement and is dated the 3rd of September 1993. Smoke started to come through the air conditioning units and someone remarked, oh there's smoke and people were panicking. <laughs> and then really quickly the whole cabin was enveloped in this smoke, so people knew it was, it was very serious. Cabin crew, that they were really afraid. You could see that they were afraid. In the last 25 years, air accident departments have made nearly 50 recommendations and findings related to contaminated air events in over a dozen countries globally. They include the introduction of contaminated air warning systems, which the regulators simply ignore. Why? IKO has issued training guidelines to reduce the negative impact on flight safety. And the High Court of Australia has made the legal position very clear about exposures. 18 years is a long time to receive justice. 
I now know that there is a design for with these aircraft. I hope this problem will be fixed to stop crews and passengers having their health jeopardised. The High Court of Australia accepted inhaling oil is harmful. It should never have happened. And yet today, pilots can tell you the temperature in the aircraft cabin, the temperature outside the aircraft, but nothing to monitor the quality of the air they and people on board breathe. I'm a former airline pilot, and I've been researching the contaminated air issue for nearly 25 years. I have a PhD and MSc on the issue, and I am a qualified air accident investigator. Aviation regulators, aircraft manufacturers and airlines have done and continue to do all they can to delay taking the action needed to fix this problem. They're terrified of the liability issues and they simply ignore the evidence that clearly shows that this is a health and flight safety risk that needs to be resolved. How many more crews will be impaired or incapacitated before the industry fixes this problem? Rather than fix the problem, they simply carry out more and more research with the sole purpose of delaying having to take action to fit filters and sensors on aircraft and look after the people. Oil manufacturers have made it very clear why these heated oils should not be inhaled, yet aircraft have no contaminated air warning systems. To ignore the recommendations of air accident investigators, to ignore oil manufacturer warnings, to ignore the pilots who have been impaired and incapacitated, to ignore the experts' scientific reports and findings, and to allow passengers and crew to continue to be exposed is grossly negligent. This results in more legal actions, more maintenance costs, and more negative press for an industry that depends on the fundamental public belief that air travel is safe for all, including the unborn. What we don't know is the consequences of exposures to the unborn. They have very narrow windows sometimes, developmental windows, where an exposure can cause severe uh, deficit in, the, in their development. And we do know these uh, compounds that are coming out of the engine oil can affect development. And uh, that's not something you'd want to have happen to your unborn child. It's time for the aviation industry, policymakers, and labor organizations to work together to mandate the introduction of warning systems and total cabin air filtration systems. If you're left with any doubt now about contaminated air, look at me. I used to be an airline pilot. I flew for 20 years, and I now no longer fly because of contaminated air. My last employer terminated my position on with a letter that stated, we can no longer guarantee you a safe working environment. And that was with reference to the air in the aeroplane. So, hey, a reality check. If it's not safe for me, how can it be safe for you? All crews and passengers deserve to breathe clean air. It's time to fit effective sensors and bleed air filtration systems on passenger jet aircraft. Fly informed and demand change. The industry has had long enough to fix the problem.